In this lesson, we will learn about ghosting. Ghosting is a great tool for checking timing and spacing. It's just like the 2D animation approach of flipbooking, where we would flip through various images to make sure that our animation is timed well. Let's go ahead and have a look at how this is displayed in 3D. We'll go to our show menu, we'll turn on NURBS curves, and now we'll scrub forward so that we can grab one of our controls to ghost. Let's say we go ahead and grab the control right above the infiltrator. That's the center of gravity control. With that selected, we can now go to Animate, Go Selected. Let's head over to our option box. I'll reset the settings so yours match mine. By default, this is going to point to our global preferences. Let's head over to our animation preferences and have a look at where to find these global settings. So once in your preferences, you can go to Display Animation and here they are. So there are only a few. We have steps before current frame, steps after current frame, and frames per step. What this means is that we're going to see three ghosts before and after our current time. And this last parameter will determine how many frames we're able to view. So if this was set to five, we would see every fifth frame. Cool. So we can go ahead and save these settings out. And now we can go ahead and click on Ghost and take a look at what has happened. Again, we could see a printout of the selected object. You'll also notice that we're able to see a ghost of the selected object's children. So right now, its child object, which is Body Revolve, that's the control underneath the infiltrator, has also been ghosted. If you were to go back to your ghost option box, take a look. You'll notice that hierarchy is on, and that's why we're able to see the ghost of, again, the child objects of what we've ghosted. Cool. How do we turn off the ghost? Well, with that same object selected, we can go back to Animate and choose Unghost Selected or Unghost All. If we choose Ungo Selected, we can go to the option box and we can make sure hierarchy is on. That way, when we choose Unghost, not only the object that we have selected will be unghosted, but its hierarchy as well. All right, super cool. So again, I just wanted to kind of show you how the ghosting tool works. So I'll go ahead and reapply it, and we'll have a look at what happens as we scrub through the animation. You'll notice that our shapes, they spread further and further apart as the animation picks up speed. But as it slows down, the shapes will build up. What this means is that the animation is going to move slower at the buildup, but it will move a bit faster when they start to separate. So that's how we can start to figure out our timing and spacing. If we notice that there was a moment where the animation should speed up and we saw a buildup, which means, again, that the animation is slowing down. Well, at that point, that's when we need to start tweaking the animation to remove that buildup unless it needs to happen at that time. Cool, so I'll go ahead and play through this. Fantastic, so you can see the smooth transition where it does pick up speed, but then it will eventually start to come to a stop. Nice, so that's how we can start to work with the ghosting tool to our benefit, so we can say that, hey, everything's timed just fine. I think I'm finished with this project, and now I can hand my file off. And then at that point, once you have completed your work, make sure to turn off your ghost, because it can get pretty annoying for other artists to use a file that has a ghost on your animated objects. So be considerate of the rest of the team, and make sure to turn off your ghosting tool after you're finished with it. But I just wanted to point out how ghosting works, and how it can be useful for us in 3D.